Hi, I'm George Pearson. In this Photoshop Elements video, I'll be talking a little bit about the tool right down here, bottom left hand corner, the Content Aware Move tool, and why I don't like it and I don't use it. Now, if you like this video, make sure you click that like button and of course share with your friends. Also hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss out on any videos in the future. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, then you should take a look at my complete training titles and you'll find links for that up there in the upper right hand corner and also in the description. Okay, let's get to it. Here's a nice picture of this girl and pretty much there's no real problem with this except that there's a bit too much space over here on the right hand side and not enough on the left hand side so the composition is off just by a little bit and if I could move her over to the right just a little bit, it would look a lot better. Here's an example of that. Move her over, and it's a better looking picture with that slight move. It just makes what she's looking at looks more important over here as opposed to this. Now, you would think it's a simple job for that content aware move. It's also a good example of why it really is not that great of a tool, and I'll show you how to do this move properly. Let's first look at that content aware move tool. It's right down there. There it is. Now when you're using this tool, one thing to keep in mind is that you want to work on a copy of your background layer, not the background layer, because this is going to make changes to the image. So the first thing you want to do is take a background layer here, make a copy of that duplicate of that, and work on that duplicate, and then hide and save your original just in case things mess up, which they probably will. Now, the way you use this, we'll be doing it on Move, Transform on Drop, that's fine. I have the healing set up the default settings, all just real basic, and there's your tool. And you just make a little selection right around whatever it is you want to move. Make sure out just a little ways to have some background in there as well to help blend in the move. And I'll just come right around like this. And I'll move over just a little bit. Right about there. I'll let go. Click the green check mark and Photoshop Elements does its magic and does that move for us. And let's see how things look on this one. Let's just deselect. And you can see some problems in here already. There is some weirdness happening up here right behind her head. A little weirdness in the wall over here. We've lost part of her finger right down there. Actually lost part of the finger. Let me just zoom in so you can see that a bit better. There you go. Her finger has become transparent. That's not very good. Notice there isn't a good match in here on the wall. Kind of messed that up. A little bit of the background is still showing there behind her head. If I scroll over here to the, this side, the top of her hair looks okay. A little bit weird right in here. The background's kind of messed up. You can see there we've lost that bit of that railing. These are just the usual problems. There's some hair sticking out over here. Here's some hair over there. Bunch of hair sticking out down over there, kind of weird stuff happening again. And this is really why I don't like this tool. Notice here, it's kind of duplicated things. A little bit of a duplication happened there. I guess kind of odd. Kind of strange in here. So that's really why I don't like the tool. A bit of jacket shown down there. Now these kind of things could of course be fixed with some clone stamp work. But if you're doing any clone stamp work anyway, you might as well do this properly. So let me show you how I would make this move without the tool. Now, if you have a clean background, like when you're out in the desert or she's standing in the middle of a field and it's real kind of even grass, that's the example that Adobe likes to use is even grass. It's the easiest way you can do this thing. If you have even grass, it'll do a good job. You know, even sand, even any kind of background, if it's even, you can use this tool and it works out fairly well. Where it doesn't work out is you get things like this or you get more complicated backgrounds. It has a real hard time with that. And it will occasionally do things like down here, chop off a finger. So that's why I don't like the tool. It tends to have errors, which I'd have to go back in and fix anyway. So if I'm doing that kind of fixing, I might as well start from scratch and do it that way. Okay, so that's about the tool. Now, one little thing about this tool. I use the tool to make the selection. You don't have to do that. If you want to, you can use regular selection tools, make a real nice, very careful selection, even use refined edge, then use this tool to make your move, but you'll still have these same kinds of problems. 
Okay, let's go ahead and I'm just going to delete this background. There we go. Back to our original. Now let me show you the way I would do this without using that tool will have much better effect. It's a bit more work, I admit that, but you get a better result as well. I'll start off with the polygonal lasso tool up here. And let's just make a selection in kind of nice and close in here. I'm not trying to be right up against the edge, just close. And whenever I move this in a stop or a second, I'm, I'm clicking on that point. And then Photoshop Elements comes in and fills in the line between my clicks. Now when you're using this tool, don't click too quickly or it's going to collapse the selection down on itself and you'll have to start over again. So this point, I made a selection basically the same as I did with the Content Aware Move tool. But let's now go one step further and we'll clean the edge up using Refine Edge. So select and Refine Edge. Here we are. I normally like to use this at the overlay. I'm not going to bother doing anything fancy down here. We'll leave all these at their default settings for this video. The size here, right there, is 35. You can kind of see the cross there. There it is, right there. You can kind of see that. That's the size of the brush. I'm going to make that a bit larger. If you want, you can actually just type in a number down here to change your size. And that size looks better. Now to use this, just take this cross here and just go right over the edge of that that kind of red color out there and overlap on the hair as well. Now what this does is it tells Photoshop Elements to re-examine that edge and make a better selection. You just go along, just kind of paint along the edge here. There's little spots like that inside the hair. Do the outside first and then come in and we'll catch those as well. It's a great tool for cleaning up these kinds of edges. Let's get some of that stuff in there. That looks good. And it'll come down along the edge of the jacket right there. Now once you've done this, you want to go back in and make sure that you have a nice clean selection that it's not messed up at all. And you do that by zooming in. Have our zoom tool right here. Let's just zoom in a little bit like that. Hold the space bar down. That'll give you a hand and you can then move your image around. So there's a little bit of pink showing right there. Let's clean that out. I'll just switch my tool over to this tool. This is the Erase tool. And I'll bring my size back down to the default 35 for this. This is a little bit smaller. And I'll erase right along that edge. And that takes out any of that adjustment, any of that masking. Right on that edge gives you a much cleaner edge. So just go around and check those edges and make sure they're okay. Now right in here is a, not quite selected enough, but I think that'll be fine because we're basically on the same background, so I think we're just fine there. And just check the edges around here. And a little bit right down there on the jacket. Let me just catch that. So by using this tool, I can be very careful with my edge and make it as clean as I possibly can. All right, looks good. Let's just fit back on screen right there. Now you want to output this to Selection. It'll drop down this right there. Just choose Selection, choose OK. Now that you have that selection, go up to Layer and New Layer via Copy. And what that gives you, if I hide the background, it gives you the image, the girl, on her own layer. So there we are. Now to make the move, it's a simple process. Just grab the Move tool here, pull it to the right a little bit, and line it up like that. I like having the hand right over here over that line, just about the right positioning. So I've now moved her over. Now this is the point where Content Aware would take over and replace that background here, this duplicated section, with parts of the background. So we'll be doing the exact same thing, but we'll use the Clone Stamp tool instead and just do it ourselves, where we have more control over the replacement of that with background imagery. And that's really where the Content Aware tool tends to fall down is that fix in there. Also on that selection, it tends to cut into your main subject frequently. Like we lost that finger down there. Didn't have that problem here with this particular technique. Okay, to do that, we'll be clone stamping on this image. So again, I want to make a copy of that background. There we go. Hide the original. 
That's just in case. If you mess up, we can always go back to the original right there. All right, let's start off with the hardest part first, and that's right up here. We have these straight lines. So let's zoom in on that. Now, if we're lucky, we can make this look pretty good without having a whole lot of work on that. You see, there's, there's kind of a white bar right here. It matches this bar up here. So if we take a copy of this and move it down to here, we should be able to get that nice match. So to do that, go to the Clone Stamp tool. You see there's the size of that brush. That's fine. That's at 50 picks right now. I have a soft edge on the brush. And I'll come right over the edge here. Hold the Alt key down and click right in the middle. I shall do upper left hand corner of this bar shape right there. Let go of the Alt key and you can kind of see the edge right inside of my little move tool. So I'll bring that down and I'll align that up where that would be down here on that one in behind her head. And then we'll just clone that to the right and fill in that piece. So that fixes that bit in there. Now I need to move some of this down just over this part here. We can do that again, clone stamp tool. I'm gonna make my brush about half that size, I think. That's better. Same thing, hold the Alt key down. I'll click right in the middle of this, right on that dividing line between that light and that dark part of that. Click right there and then just pull that straight down and then I'll clone stamp in here and then I'll come down into the background. And I'm just being very careful to come in and do a little bit of clone stamp in there. Now it begins to duplicate down here again, so once we're away from this edge, we fix that problem up there, that looks fine. Once we're away from that edge, I can bring my size up again a little bit. And then Alt key, click out here someplace, and then come in and clone stamp in here and let's hide the rest of that stuff. Now it's, see where I'm going over her hair here? The reason why it's not covering on top of this is because she is in front of or above the background layer. So this is the foreground layer and then we're clone stamping in behind that which makes it real easy. Now we're fixed with that, that one problem right there. That was the hardest part and that was kind of messed up with the content of our move tool. Everything else is fairly straightforward and easy to do. Again, where it's critical, I'd be in close like this. Where it's not as critical, you can back out a little bit. I think we can back out now. Let's just use our zoom here. I'll zoom out about like that. And we'll look for some more things we need to be careful of this. Looks like our edge right here of this drive. Be careful in there. So back to our clone stamp tool. And I'll come down, down here someplace and I'll just click on that alt and click and you can kind of see that piece in there just align that up and then paint straight up along that edge and we'll just duplicate that edge now don't go in any higher because you're beginning up into the tree so it'll take a little bit of back and forth work to get this handled nicely I'll start like right there and just clone step a bit of that in so just doing just little moves here alt click and then clone stamp and right down here alt click and clone stamp whenever you see that little kind of target in there it means I'm holding down the alt key at that point now I want to get rid of this little blip here I'll just come down here grab some from down there and let's just do that and then it's just a matter of coming in and grabbing different spots like this and painting that in to clean up that section give me a nice clean edge down there. And I'll grab from some different spots in here just for some variety of color back in there. Luckily it's out of focus which makes it a bit easier to do this. And just work in and clean that edge. Okay that looks really nice. Now there's some duplication right here, 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 those little dots. I'm just going to get rid of a couple of those like that so it doesn't look as repetitive in there. Okay, that looks fine. Let's now come in and do some of this bit in here. Same trick, I'll come right down here, Alt click, come up and align that line up, looks like right about there. This time I'll paint 
down into the street a little bit and we'll catch that edge. There we go. You can see why this is a slower but much better technique than the content aware tool because I'm coming in and actually the, the content aware move tool. I'm coming in and duplicating the parts I want to duplicate and I can do a real careful match this way. Also, because we've already copied out this layer and clean up that edge, get a real nice clean edge this way. So it's merely a matter now of just coming in, grabbing some stuff here and cloning it over here. Now notice the lines on the stride, they're kind of going this kind of angled direction. From here on out, I'm going to be clone stamping in that kind of direction. So I'm, I'm matching that angle. And it's grabbing stuff and coming in and just clone stamping in. Also notice how it's out of focus here and it slowly comes into more focus down here. It means I'll need to be doing little bits of this as I come down so I get that focus shift happening in here. If it doesn't look quite right, just come in and do a little bit more. Like that's not quite right in there. I'll clean that up. Okay. Come down to here now. There we go. And just grab a spot, try to match the lines up. Like right there, right there go right on the line and then match that line up down here and then clone stamp in using those lines. Now I'm going to do a little bit out here and then move in on a few steps on this to get the best match. I think at this point I can also bring my size a bit larger again. It's going to be about 50, 55. That's pretty good. And I'll grab right there and just line that up again. Now the spacing of the lines gets larger as we come down, so I don't want to go too far on this. So I need a little bit of fix right in there. So again, I'll do several passes and slowly work my way down and match the lines. So I kind of missed on that one, so let's just try that again. That's better. and just walk it down and follow the direction of these lines. If you mess up, just go back and do it again. So that's okay. And we're just about there. Just matching in these lines right down there. Looks good. A little more in through here. And just about got it. Right there and get the last little bit up in here like that there we go that's matched nicely everything else over here is okay because we were overlapping onto the background so that's fine let's now zoom out fit screen and there we go there's our nice clean move let's see how this looks I'll take the original background layer let's just Duplicate that layer, move that on top. So there's the original, and there's our move. And as you can see here, it's an absolutely perfect move. No weird edges happening, no missing fingers, nothing like that. It, again, took a little more time, but it's, it's a perfect job, as opposed to that messy job that you get with the content-aware move. Now, I'll be honest with you, sometimes I'll use this to a content-aware move just to see if my composition will look good. You know, I'll do a fast move with that. I won't worry about the edges, and I'll just look at the composition. And if it looks good, that's actually how I did this one. If it looked good from the content of our move, I'll then go back and I'll do it this way using the new layer right there, and then doing my own duplication to with a clone stamp tool to cover the part that's exposed as a duplication. So there you go, a little bit there about the Content Aware Move tool and why I don't like it and the preferred method to do this kind of move, which is simply to copy out your foreground subject, put that on a new layer, make your move, 
and then make a copy of your background and use the clone stamp tool to repair the background. So there it is, the content remove tool and the right way to do this. Now if you've been enjoying my YouTube videos and you want to help support my channel, then take a look at my training titles. They're inexpensive and you'll learn everything about the programs. And again, you'll find a link for that up there in the upper right hand corner and also down in the description. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.